Hey folks, Sean here, and today what I want to talk to you about is the epic failure that Southwest Airlines has recently gone through and a perfect lesson of how not to manage technical debt. Now, the summary of this case is that they had an outdated, archaic scheduling software, which had been a huge problem for a long time, but the executives at Southwest never prioritized updating and properly fixing it. As such, it has recently left up to a million passengers stranded over the very active holiday travel season. And that's not it. There are way more embarrassing statistics to share with you about this entire debacle. Uh, so let's get into it. In a New York Times opinion article, which I'll link in the notes below, it goes into greater detail about the impact that even goes beyond leaving a million passengers stranded in one of the busiest travel times of the year. And that is the impact it had on their own employees. Flight attendants and other flight crew, for example, when they needed to get redirected, the software had no way of tracking where they were and handling any interruptions to their trip as well which obviously was a cascading problem that impacted the consumers and other passengers as well. But ultimately, some of the impact here was that in order to get rerouted, their own employees needed to spend a ridiculous amount of time on the phone, in particular on hold. And the article reports anywhere from three hours to up to 17 hours in at least one case, which is just bonkers in my mind, in order to try to handle getting rerouted so that they can continue on with just their shift. That's insane. Your software is performing that poorly, how do you not know that that's something that needs to be updated as soon as entirely possible? <laughs> that's just crazy to me that you're experiencing problems like that and you're still not prioritizing this. Now you might be thinking that the Southwest team could have done more to raise the priority here. And I assure you in this case, that's probably not what happened. In fact, Southwest team and the union were very active and adamant that the software was a huge weakness going to be a liability that could lead to a disaster like this one. In fact, including strikes that they attended, they held signs which called specific attention to the software, having you know icons and graphics on it, poking fun at stuck loading signs and things like that. Beyond that, they had similar messages on trucks, digital screens as they were driving around a lot of the Southwest Airlines major locations, in addition to even penning and writing an open letter which specifically calls attention to their technology and the problems with scheduling that stem from their technology not being properly updated. So their team and their union were very active and very adamant that software was a huge liability and needed to be addressed before it caused a disaster like this one. So what did the Southwest executives do in response to all of this? Well, the answer is not much. In fact, back in October, they had a similar cancellation crisis and the CEO is quoted as saying they have wonderful software, which is obviously not the case, and now they look stupid. So the team did just about everything they could in order to get them to understand that this is a priority, this is something you need to address. It's causing the team incredible pain, losing them a lot of time, costing the organization a ton of money, and these cancellation crises, yes, plural, as it's happened multiple times, this is just the latest one and the most severe to date, are going to continue until you prioritize this. Yet, they glossed over the issue and essentially tried to convince everyone that the software was fine. Now, that is a huge risk when it comes to managing your technical debt and making sure that your software is in a position to be able to support your team and ultimately the customer. If you don't do this and you ignore this, it's inevitable that you're gonna run into an issue that is gonna cause a major catastrophe like this one, and it's gonna cost you unbelievably in terms of not just financial costs, but brand reputation, that risk. That's gonna be hugely embarrassing because you didn't listen to your team and you didn't properly update your software. So let this Southwest Airlines debacle be a lesson to all of us in terms of managing technical debt. I understand that it isn't something that's easy to prioritize, but if you don't, it's going to cost you one way or the other. So it's something you must prioritize. And you need to figure out how to strike an appropriate balance between managing your technical debt and pushing your product forward. The technical debt can also support you in other ways. That's something that I want you to take away from this as well too, is it isn't just something that needs to be done that doesn't provide a return. Besides avoiding catastrophes like this, updating and managing your product from a technical debt perspective can help improve its efficiency, can enable you to benefit from economies of scale, and ultimately can increase your velocity as well too of being able to ship additional features. I like to think of it in terms of managing and maintaining your assembly line. If your assembly line is more robust, if it's something that can handle greater velocity, then doesn't that benefit you elsewhere as well too? I always feel like it does, and whenever I'm working with clients of my own to help them better understand how they need to strike the appropriate balance, we can get back on track and we can ultimately manage our product even better 
because we've also prioritized managing the underlying infrastructure. Thanks for watching my video on managing technical debt. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Also, I'd love for you to leave comments below in terms of if you found this content valuable and what else you'd like to see. In addition to that, I'll leave you with a challenge in terms of how you go about managing your technical debt. What does your split or balance look like for your own individual software products? I'd love to hear from you.